Ethan Wilder was weird. I can't think of any other way to describe him. He was friendly enough, and usually kept to himself. But he didn't say much, and when he did, it was the weirdest shit ever. So, I didn't talk to Ethan often. He used a whiteboard to communicate, which could get tedious especially when he took forever to respond. Yesterday, I was shopping with my mum, and we ran into my English teacher, who, for some reason, dumped Ethan Wilder's books into my arms. Apparently, Ethan missed summer school, so Mrs. Kane was on the warpath. She didn't want to visit him directly, and my mother, of course, piped up with, Oh yes, Luke would love to help out. I did say, no, I'm good, but my mother and my teacher collectively agreed that I was doing this, and I had zero choice. It's worth noting that I've already graduated. Ethan was repeating a year and since I was no longer a student, as well as a fully grown adult, I didn't have to follow my teacher's orders. However, being in the midst of two middle-aged women, with one being my mother, put me at a disadvantage. When I pulled a face, mum called me adorable and tugged at my cheeks, which made me want to crawl into a hole. Mrs. Kane dumped an entire semester's worth of workbooks into my arms and then gave me his home address. It's the middle of summer, and the sun was baking the back of my neck. I had to walk to Ethan Wilder's place, with zero choice. I didn't even get a fucking reward. Huh. You'd think I'd get cash, but no. According to my mother, it was a gesture of goodwill. I don't have a car, and maybe it was my fault for not asking my teacher for a ride. But by the time I reached Ethan's house, I was two steps from throwing up. I had to gather myself on the doorstep. I was soaked through with sweat, and my head felt like it was going to explode. Ethan's place was not what I expected. A regular suburban house with a white picket fence. Maybe I was just being a judgmental asshole, but Ethan didn't strike me as a Brady Bunch type of son. I definitely had a mental image of where he lived, and this was not it. I think Jake, a guy in my class, once said Ethan lived in the trailer park. I guess I believed him. Knocking three times on the Wilder family's door. I just wanted to get it over with. The sun was already setting, and I wasn't looking forward to the walk back. Mum disengaged herself from mum duties after 6pm, so it was my responsibility to make my own way home. Now... I know I said Ethan was weird, but I wasn't expecting him to answer the door with a strip of duct tape over his mouth. The stench that followed him and clung to him was like a physical entity slamming into me. It was a mixture of rotten food and feces. Ethan's face had grown noticeably thinner, sunken eyes and hollow cheeks giving him a gaunt, almost skeletal appearance. His clothes were visibly filthy, with his jeans and shirt clinging to a wiry frame like a second skin. It was the lack of spark, of life in his eyes. Two hollowed-out caverns penetrating right through me that sent me stumbling back, my heart in my throat, 
before I could speak. The guy pulled out a roll of duct tape from his pocket and took a stumbled step towards me. Without a word, he even tore off a single strip. And before I could stop him, he plastered it across my mouth. What the fuck? I didn't know what to say or do. Even Wilder was weird. But he wasn't this fucking weird. The moment was surreal and fucking confusing. And I couldn't understand why I wasn't running away. Instead, paralyzed, while he glued it in place. We were two 19-year-old guys. So why did I feel like we were back in kindergarten? I went to tear it off, but he manically shook his head, reaching for his whiteboard. Hi, Ethan scribbled. Come in. (laughs) I said, then remembered my mouth was taped up. I gestured to his workbooks in my arms but he ignored them. Come in, he scribbled. You look like you could use a drink of water. Smiley face. I tried to tear the tape off again, but Ethan stuck it back in place. No, Luke, he wrote down, showing the whiteboard in my face. You can't speak. I could see his lips stretching into a grin through the creases in his gag. He went back to his whiteboard, scribbling another message. I noticed it took him three tries to write the word come before he gave up and just drew a large arrow pointing inside the house. I didn't know what to say. I wanted to laugh, but laughing felt wrong. I didn't realize how young and stupid I was, or how much I wanted my mother, until I was standing in front of Ethan Wilder, who wrapped his hand around my wrist and yanked me forward. I dropped the books, but he didn't care, pulling me over the threshold and slamming the door. Ethan's grasp was strangely gentle, but I knew if I started tugging away, his nails would start to dig in. I had no choice but to follow him. This guy was a fucking psychopath. To my confusion, the main hallway in the Wilder household was one big mattress. I wasn't expecting it already stumbling forward. Ethan still had a tight grasp on my wrist, yanking me into the lounge. It was what you would expect. A modern, family-oriented living room with a couch, a coffee table, and a TV pinned to the wall. Looking around, something cold slivered up my throat. I don't think I registered the walls at first. I think my brain skipped over them, maybe on purpose. But once my gaze left the crystal paperweights on the mantelpiece and the family photos, something snapped inside me, like a bungee cord severing, and my gaze was stuck, suddenly, glued to every corner. The walls, I thought dizzily, my thoughts beginning to twitch and contort. I recognized the markings as writing, but that's where my brain short-circuited. All I could see was writing. So much writing. So many markings scrawled into what had been picture-perfect paintwork. It didn't hit me until I was moving closer, that the words were carved and scrawled and scribbled, in dripping, intense scarlet. But the more I tried to understand what I was reading, 
I could feel myself sinking deeper. For a disorienting moment, I forgot my own name, then my mum's name. I forgot why I was there in the first place, and then, after a stumbling step forward that dragged my body towards the walls, phantom fingers twining around my neck, I didn't know who I was. These words were pouring into my head and setting my blood alight, numbing my bones. It felt like my mind was being drained, sucked right through my skull by an invisible vacuum. I remember dropping to my knees, as if in prayer, but I don't know who I was praying to. I could sense it in the air, a suffocating presence forcing me into a bow. It allowed me to lift my head slowly, so I didn't take it in all at once. And, like a puppet, my body obeyed, paralysed. The writing on the walls, the indistinguishable scribbles splattered in scarlet, were fucking talking to me. I could hear them, the static whispers I couldn't understand bleeding into my skull. The same words were written, carved, and scrawled in a language that twisted my gut, igniting thoughts and feelings I couldn't comprehend, already twisting and contorting my expression. Happiness. Joy that wasn't mine, that flooded my brain, tricking me into believing I was feeling... pleasure. I was grinning through the duct tape gag, my lips violently stretched across my face, until I could taste blood. But then there was despair, pain and anger and pleasure, coming together in a cocktail that filled my eyes with tears, my lips parting in a shriek I couldn't swallow. I didn't understand the words, and yet my body did. I had to get out. The thought buzzed in my mind. I had to get out. 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 But then my thoughts were backwards. The words mixing up and together and apart. I couldn't move. I couldn't think or breathe because my eyes were already reading and rereading each scarlet word. And, like I was in a trance, I crawled forward, my trembling hands itching to touch them. I could sense my sharp breath struggling against my gag, hysterical beads of laughter crawling up my throat. I reached out with trembling hands, pressing the palms of my hands against the writing, carving my fingernails into each indentation. I could feel the urge hit me like a wave of ice water, my own fingers twitching, ready to tear into my skin and imprint myself on these walls. It was the only way I was going to give back, the only way I could pledge myself to these words. Ethan grasped my hand, pulling me to my feet and my head spun, my identity crashing back into me. Blinking rapidly, I shuffled back, swallowing bouts of bath filling my mouth. It wasn't words that were carved into every wall in Ethan Wilder's living room. It was something else. A, a language. A thing that made me want to scream and claw my hair out, rip the flesh from my bones. It made me feel... crazy. Reality seeped back into fruition, and I was staring at entrails ingrained into the wall, old red falling from each marking. I was... Luke... The thought was delayed, already suffocated. 
19 years old. I had a mum, and her name was Iris. Ethan pulled me back, and like a doll cut from its strings, I stumbled toward him. I barely felt his hand still wrapped around my wrist. Sorry, smiley face. I couldn't register what he was writing for a moment before clarity hit. The stink was worse, hanging stagnant in the air, and I had already clawed into my own arm. A single line of red drawn across my skin. I could barely feel the sting. It felt alien to me, like it wasn't attached to my body. Ethan prodded his board, and his writing contorted into shape, actual English. That was my parents. They made a mess. I nodded slowly, dazedly. I could still feel it. The sensation of drowning wrapped around me, suffocating my senses. Slimy phantom hands covering my eyes and snaking into my mouth. When Ethan twisted around and skipped upstairs, taking the steps two at a time, I followed, like something bound us together. I was half aware of my mind screaming at me to run, but the rest of me, polluted thoughts and contorted words, wanted to go further into the wilder house. I started up the staircase, one by one. The walls upstairs were covered in writing too. Get out. Save my baby. God, save my baby. Save my baby. Save my baby. I could see the writer's slow descent into insanity through every warning. When I reached the top, I stepped on something that squelched through my toes. Huh. I don't remember taking off my shoes and socks. When my gaze found the floor, I was standing in something writhing a slimy red substance pooling across the cream carpet. The smell hit me again, putrid and thick, but I could barely register that somehow it was moving, sinking into the flesh at my feet, bleeding into my blood. Part of me wanted to jump back, while this severed puppet version of me was swaying back and forth, while phantom hands tried to pull me back onto my knees. Ethan held up his whiteboard, and I steadied myself. Mum gave birth to my little sister right here. His words twisted in and out of view, blurring together. They became numbers then letters, then numbers, and then blank. Ethan tugged me down the hallway, and I finally met his parents. Mr. and Mrs. Wilder looked like they might have been normal. Mrs. Wilder was still wearing her wedding ring. Through my foggy vision, all I could see were two unmoving, skin-coloured figures standing in front of the wall, and in one sudden, jolting movement, they started to writhe, flailing, like performing an interpretive dance. Ethan's parents were completely naked, their skin rigid and wrinkly. Mrs. Wilder was pulling out her entrails and smearing them across pretty pink paint. Mrs. Wilder's mouth was stretched wide, a grotesque, horrific grin, like she was laughing, but only gasps of breath escaped her lips. Her laughter was silent, 
fingers carving those exact same words on the downstairs walls. The severed part of me could understand this unearthly, inhuman urge they had to replicate those words, carving and drawing them into every surface, everything that could be drawn on. The bedsheets were covered in nonsensical scribbles, the carpet torn into and shredded, bearing each symbol, which was slowly burning themselves into my entangled brain. The more I looked at them and tried to figure them out, I wanted to copy them until my fingers were bleeding, and then I would use myself. That sudden, poisonous thought was enough to bring me back to reality. Ethan had a tight hold on my arm, his fingers digging into my flesh, choking up the shriek building in my throat. I caught a glimpse of a twisted, unsettling grin that flashed across his face, contorting back to fear and pain. His eyes were hollow and crying out, and then they were empty caverns glittering lunacy I didn't think possible. The guy jumped up and down on his heels. I could see his grin through the tape, growing wider. More and more maniacal. Whatever Ethan Wilder had been fighting, he had lost. Do you want to see her? He asked, writing on the whiteboard. Huh? Huh? I spoke through the tape, my voice no longer mine. Ethan responded with wide, blinking eyes, jumping up and down like a toddler. His shirt rode up, revealing that twisting, contorted script carved into the flesh of his stomach, even his face. Looking closer, real close, I could see scars where he'd marked himself, slicing each blank letter onto his own skin. Ethan, with barely contained excitement, kept shoving his whiteboard in my face, furiously scribbling with his pen. I managed to take two steps back, but by now, it felt like I was stuck in quicksand. My legs were trapped, frozen in place. Ethan held up his whiteboard, and every word he scrawled looked and felt physical, like it was skittering across the surface. When my sister was born, the nurse who delivered her ripped out her own eyes. He wrote, before erasing it with his sleeve. Ethan's eyes were frenzied, like he was enjoying himself. The people in black told us she would turn our town mad. Another step back, and I was struggling to breathe. They put her to sleep, and they refused to take her away, because they were scared of her. So they left her with us, sad face. Ethan held up his whiteboard again hiding behind it. The wall sickness took mum and dad. It made them want to wake up my little sister. He erased it quickly, and continued scribbling. I was scared of her, and what it did to my parents, Luke. I didn't want to get the wall sickness too. Mum and dad were too loud, and I had to be quiet. Ethan dramatized his words with a finger to his taped-up mouth. He erased that and added, So, I cut out their voices and stitched them back up. Everything had to be quiet. That's what people said. He tipped his head to the side, and I heard an unmistakable laugh muffle through his tape. Then I started to read the words on the wall, and, and, 
and his words started to shift and twist together, mimicking the words on the wall. Ethan was giggling through his gag, then he pushed me through another door. I didn't realise how many doors were in the house. I counted two upstairs. But when Ethan was showing me through one at the end of the hallway, I counted six. There were six doors. The room I stumbled into, Ethan by my side, was a nursery. Mrs. Wilder had decorated the room a light purple pastel colours blending together. I found myself in front of a crib, a tiny bundle of entangled blankets. But there was no baby, only empty space bleeding between the cloth. The more I stared and looked for it, there was nothing. And in the nothing was something, but I couldn't see it. I choked on my own hysterical shriek of laughter. I reached out and touched the blankets, touched the oozing space between the blankets and thin air, and the nothing in between. It was that nothing that snapped something inside me. I was already laughing, already tearing at my face, already being forced to my knees to pray. Ethan finally ripped the tape off his mouth. I want you to do it. He whispered, his words collapsing into tangled gibberish. I could feel my own tongue already contorting, ancient words dripping from my swollen mouth. But I swallowed them down. Ethan lit out a single shriek of laughter. (laughs) I want you to wake Lula up. I could sense myself already giving in to the walls. The six doors that were expanding into seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But then it all let go of me. Slowly... I sensed it, felt it detach from inside my mind. I could think again, breathe again. Ethan was still howling with laughter, dancing in circles, and I was moving back. I was out of the door before it could grab me again, before it could wrap itself around me, suffocate my brain. I ripped the tape off my mouth, and the sting snapped me out of it. I stumbled downstairs and out of the door, back into the late evening sun, shining in my eyes. It was so easy to escape, so easy to turn around and run. So, why didn't I in the first place? I went home, and I went straight to my room. I showered and scrubbed myself until my skin was raw. I kept looking for the blank language on my skin, because it feels like it's part of me. I want to tell my mum about Ethan, but I don't know how to explain what I just saw. What almost fucking consumed me, body and mind. Please. Someone tell me what the fuck I just witnessed. Because I think I'm going mad. Mum asked me what the markings are on my arm. But the last time I looked, I didn't have any. Now I do. There's a single word carved into my skin. And I can't read it. I can't fucking read it. And it's driving me crazy. It makes me want to write it until I can understand it. Until I can comprehend it. I've already scratched it into my dresser. And then on my own walls. But the words, or 
symbols still don't look right. Maybe if I try a different angle. Yeah. I'll carve it into my ceiling next. I need to understand them. I don't think Ethan did. I think that's why he ended up like that. Please, help me understand what I saw. I'm fucking terrified. And if you can, also help me understand why there are two extra doors in my house.